Hey guys, Lone here, and for this week's video, now that I am back from Otakon and recuperated from the craziness that is Otakon, I decided to do an inking tutorial. So, disclaimers first, because disclaimers are always nice. One, this is just my way of inking, there is no right way or wrong way to ink. This is just the way that I go about inking, so take with a grain of salt. Some people may like it, some people may not. It's all up to you. I'm just putting this out here because I was asked to, so yeah. So without further ado, these are going to be the tools that I'm using during this tutorial. First of all, the paper that I will be using is the Strathmore 300 series mixed media paper. Um, pretty simple, pretty ex explanatory. So, yep. Um, this is my currently used paper. So, yeah. And then <clears throat> I will also be using a Copic multi liner. Not sure if you're going to be able to see that because of the reflective light in 0.03. And also, I will be using the Uni, the Mitsubishi Uni Pin Fine Liners. Um, I have done a review for them. I'll stick it a link somewhere in this general vicinity over here for you guys to check out if you guys are interested in these liners. And these range from 0 .05 all the way up to 0.8. So. And the other thing that I'm going to be using, if I can find it, is an eraser. A plain white eraser. So, that's all you're really going to need for this inking tutorial. If you don't have the uni pen liners, I will have down below in the description the liners that I use for specific parts of this tutorial because I know not everybody can get the new pen, so I'll have it for all the available liners that I've been able to try out. So, hopefully that will help you guys. And I will try to leave notes in the video explaining each step as we go along. So, without further ado, we are going to start this tutorial. Okay. So, now that I've explained what I'm going to be using and all that good stuff, uh, I typically wash my hands before I start inking. That's simply just to make sure that they're clean, I don't have any extra graphite or anything wonky on my hands, and also it's kind of a habit nowadays. So, um, light boxes are your friends. Just pointing that out right now. Light boxes are amazing, but if you don't have a light box, like what I'm doing here so you guys can see what I am doing I would recommend you going over your sketch lightly unless you are a light-handed sketcher I personally am kind of heavy-handed when I sketch so I go over my lines with the eraser just to lighten them up but if you're a light sketcher like other people that I know don't have to worry about that you can skip this step so I'm going to attempt to angle my camcorder in places where you're actually going to be able to see me work on this without my hand getting in the way because I feel if I record it from above, my hand will be in the way and you won't really be able to tell what I am doing. So just keep that in mind for the constant camera angle changes throughout this video. So to start out, <coughs> When I ink, for lack of a better way of putting it, I start from the front and work my way to the back of the image. So, for example, I'm going to start off doing the outline. I'm going to start off doing the foreground here with the little bush thing. And then I'm going to do the little circles before I even start working on the character. And then even whenever I work on the character, I'm going to do the arms first, then the hair, then the clothes behind it, then the face, and so on and so forth. So to do that up until we get to the details of the face, I am 
going to use the 0 0.05 multi-liner up until the details of the face and potentially some of these circles that are marked rather small. Then I will be changing multi-liners and I will explain why once we get to that. So, here we go. When I put down the 0 0.05 liner, I don't worry about line weight at all. At this point, you just want to get your lines sketched over or inked over without any sort of line weight. It just makes it easier for me to just do this step by step this way. So, I'm going to get started on that. So, I will record that little bit and then I will get on to line weight and all that extra hoodly doodly stuff. So, here we go. Now, as you guys can see, I've stopped using the 0 .05 pen, and I am actually moving on to the Copic Multiliner 0 .03 Multiliner. Um, the reason for this is because I love you too, Houdini, but I'm recording, baby, so go find somewhere else. Thank you. But as you guys can see, sorry about that, I want to kind of show that these small circles here are at a further distance. I also want to show that this bit of clothing here, which I actually have sketched in even though it's done really lightly because of erasing, and this bit of cloth right here, I want to show that they are being seen through by like a ball or a crystal. So I want to use a thinner line weight for that and I also like using the 0 0.03 multi-liner on the face especially because if you stuff up the face it's just not pretty like I don't know but I tend to use a smaller multi-liner on the face just because it's not as difficult to stuff up so once again without adding any line weight whatsoever and just leaving it to a flat line, I'm going to go ahead and ink these different spaces that I have left blank as of right now, or at least uninked. So let's get started, shall we?
Okay, so once you have your basic lines down, I typically go ahead and erase said pencil lines underneath. That's just how I do it. Now, from here on out, you have two choices. You can either leave it as is, and then add line weight after you finish coloring, which I have seen some artists do, or in the way that I do it, I tend to add line weight. Now, line weight is very, very crucial, especially depending on where your light source is coming from. So, say for example, I have my light source coming from this little circle right here with the little lines coming off of it. The lines that are facing in this image closer to the direction of my light source will be thinner than the lines facing away from my light source. So that's just an example. For this tutorial though, I'm just going to make it simple. The light source will be coming from the front, kind of above-ish, and that way it will be easy to follow along. Another thing to keep in mind as well is especially with where I want my light source to be coming from, this line right here, which signifies the bush, will be thicker than the lines that are behind it and the lines behind her, like for this bush and for the flowers, the line weight will be thinner. So that way you can add a variety of line weight and make your image look good. Another thing that I do as well as I go along is I fill in any sharp corners with just a little small area marked off and filled in with black. This is just to make it so that the corners that are rather harsh are filled in and it makes the lines kind of softer in appearance. Now, if you're wondering about this line under here, this area will not be filled in until after I get done coloring. The reason for that is simply because if I fill it in now, it will smudge more than likely if I'm coloring. So just to kind of prevent that, I wait until after I color to fill in this area. Now I'm not going to showcase what liners I use for this section because to be honest, it is a variety. More than likely, I will be using the following liners. 0 0.05 for the harsh corners, 0 0.1 for line weight on the person, uh, 0.3 for the bush that is currently in front of where she is standing, 0 0.03 for the circles that are actually meant to be at a distance as well as any harsh lines that are behind her, like for the flowers, for instance. And then for the border, I will be using the 0.8 Uniball to make that stand out more and to make it look more as if it's in a picture frame. Hopefully that will make sense to you. Guys, I'm going to record this and hopefully once you see it in action, you'll be able to make sense of what I'm trying to say. So. I'm going to get started on recording and get this done so that I can then color this. Yay!
So there you have it. And this is my inking tutorial. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. Keep in mind as well, I am probably going to come back to this as like time passes and spot anything else that I missed as well as once I'm finished coloring, finishing up underneath the chin and coloring that in. Um, other than that, I hope that this helped you guys out and I will see you in next week's video. So, see you guys then. Bye!